Before heavy music got split into so many different subgenres the way it is today, Slipknot in my mind were always the quintessential modern heavy metal band, but I never paid any attention to the bass work. So today I'm gonna to be checking out a video of Paul Gray playing through duality for the very first time. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Loaned University. Slipknot is a band I always appreciated from afar. I remember their self-titled in Iowa coming out many years ago and being turned on to that, but past that, I've not listened to much. I recognize that Duality is one of their more popular tracks. I might have heard it, I probably have, but the real point of today's video is to see the late Paul Gray playing for the first time. So I'm gonna watch this video of him playing through Duality, which is from the band's third studio album, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses, released in 2004. So I'm excited to see him play. May he rest in peace, but let's check him out. Here we go. Paul Gray playing Duality by Slipknot. Okay, so now that we've broken everything down, let's put it all together and play it all the way through. Uh, I've never Duality. known what he looked like, to be honest with you. Lefty. Very cool. Down there on the low B, but he must be tuned down. That's a four string. I'm not sure if Slipknot's tuning, whether that's B E A D on bass, but good to know. Here and B. That is beautiful picking technique. So controlled. You know, I get a kick out of watching bass players and you can just take 10 great bass players and watch their technique and it's all so different. I talk a lot about this in my videos. I did not start out playing with a pick. I'm not one of those people who started out playing guitar and then demoted myself to bass. I just started out as a bass player, so I don't have much experience with a pick. I have some, but I'm more of a fingerstyle player. But the pick players I looked up to were guys like Jason Newstead, Duff McKagan. They just look so cool. It just, you know, the bass was slung low, but this is just like very technically proficient looking technique. The way his wrist control is so almost robotic and the way he kind of has his other three fingers down here, which is kind of a way to balance your hand, I've learned. You know, you can kind of get a different feel bring, bringing in the fingers in, kind of letting them hang. And I've just kind of noticed that you kind of get a different approach, a different feel. So again, I'm, I love watching different players and how they pick. It can all be so varied. But his wrist control is incredible. And I love that he kind of has this soft palm muting, which is really great in aiding kind of the ferocity of the bass tone you might have in a band like this. And it kind of just gives it a softer nudge and kind of allows those guitar riffs to be a little softer and dynamic. It's a great way to match the intensity because the guitars are kind of palm muted as well. And it's kind of about achieving that singularity with the bass and guitar tone and heavy music. I want to go back to where this kind of like tremolo pick section starts. All right, it's not that fast, but cool. And to say this song kind of sounds familiar, especially that chorus kind of part in the beginning. So we'll see. Right here, look at that shot. Just looks effortless. And I just, again, love that kind of soft palm mute. Let's see. Kind of down the B minor scale there. Ooh, that's a good angle. Yeah, right there. Just, man, it's just gorgeous technique. I don't know what else to say. Looks really good. And I just, again, the way the palm muting kind of makes that riff bounce. Let's see. Uh, just love it. It's kind of some groups of threes, it sounds like, kind of giving it more of a syncopated feel, just, you know, albeit being a straight kind of technical riff. Okay, Let's see where this goes. Downstrokes. Nice. Dun, 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 
it. That's a cool phrasing. And again, as I said earlier, you know, uh, the Slipknot I have heard, it's been a long time since I've really sat down and listened to them. Iowa was, you know, if I had to pick a favorite record from them from what I remember, it would be Iowa. People equal shit. I, I just love that song, especially when that song came out 20 years ago. I just remember there's like nothing like this. So their later stuff, you know, since then, might have heard it passively. Again, the song sounds vaguely familiar, but... What, what I'm getting at is listening to Slipknot. I was never focused on the bass. There's so much going on. It's a big wall of sound. It's heavy metal. And sometimes the bass just is part of the wall of sound. So this is really interesting to kind of see how he plays. And I don't think the guitar part is kind of mirroring that chorus riff there. I want to go back to that real quick because that was kind of a groovy breakaway from this more straightforward, te straightforward technical thing. Let's see. Cool phrasing. Yeah, I can't quite hear the guitar because the bass is obviously louder, but you kind of have this cool just octave to the minor seven thing and B minor. Yes, I know I'm not playing the riff exactly right. I'm just kind of getting some of the framework down, but it's a cool that he can kind of match the guitars in unison. And of course, as a even in heavy music, when there's a lot of dense things going on, it's great that he breaks away and kind of does this more syncopated groove, which has a great phrasing as well. And again, I'm thinking about other Slipknot songs I can think of, and the bass was just not something I gravitated toward hearing. It wasn't necessarily the focal point. I'm not sure if any songs really showcase him. You might have to let me know. We could come back and do another video, but this is just a great opportunity to see what's going on under there dance wall of sound and he has some really great control and i like that he's not fighting with the guitars he's kind of complimenting them it's really tough to be a bass player in heavy music you know i've played in some heavy bands nothing like as heavy as slipknot but progressive heavier stuff and you always have the option of do you want to fight with the guitars and try to cut through or do you want to just if you can't beat them join them join the guitars and see how you can make them impact more impactful make them sound heavier and i think that's his role here little phrase there all right oh, that, that's a texture Love that little line there. Ooh, that's cool. That's a cool variation. Another thing, he didn't do that the first chorus, so he's kind of changing the octaves, maybe rearranging some of the notes in that line. I'm not sure if it changed notes or just changed octaves. Let's see, but it was a cool little place to break out. Something you really don't want to do in the first chorus. You kind of want to just let that first chorus hit and drive it home. And as a bass player, it's just common ground to come through in the second chorus and maybe give some variation to your part. Really, really interesting. Let's see. That's catchy. All right, let's see right here. So we did kind of go back up that B minor scale. It almost kind of mirrors, it's almost like a callback to this sort of kind of going down the B minor scale there. He kind of went back up. So almost a callback to the previous riff, which if that's intentional, that's a clever, subtle thing that can kind of make that chorus have just a bit of a different feel. I'd have to go back and listen to the studio version to see how present the bass is. I'm not sure. I just love how relaxed he is. breakdown here back to the intro almost oh, i 
love he's doing that bend there. It kind of makes those little pinch harmonics just have some depth to them. It almost gives them a little bit of a three-dimensional sound. Typically, those pinches can be in breaks where there's nothing but the pinch harmonic. So I always love when a bass player kind of catches that. Just kind of, it makes sure the momentum doesn't get lost in the full like frequency spectrum. You have the low end kind of representing it too. I love how he bent that though. Loving that single pickup configuration. Pretty cool. Looks kind of humbucker-ish, so it still has some fullness to it. Okay, we're up a, up a half step, whole step. You know, I'm just enamored with this picking technique. I don't want to make this whole video about that, but I just, you know, if I could show a picture of someone's picking technique to a genie and say, I want my picking technique to be that relaxed, I, this video would make the cut. It's just, it complements the dynamics of the song so well. And you need that relaxed wrist control for that. Digga, 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 digga. And I actually noticed when he plays that, Digga, 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 kind of riff. He's a little looser. Kind of watch his pick grip there. It's like his fingers are a little more open. It looks more like that. I notice when he goes to the chorus, he digs in a little more. You can kind of see the pick grip kind of tighten up. It's like he's just putting a little more pressure on it, but it's just such great control. Watch this. See, he looks a little looser there. Now watch when it hits the chorus. It's like it tightens up a bit. Next repeat. See those extra fingers look a little more relaxed. Yeah, see how he, it turned a little bit. Yeah, it's like he just digs in a bit more. I'm really impressed with the dynamics, even in the bass part that's not remotely forefront in a song or a genre like this. But Paul is still exercising palm muting to kind of go at that digga digga digga, just really mirroring the dynamics. Then he kind of opens up, tightens that pit grip, and digs in a little more to make that chorus bounce. And I'm just, I just love that little phrase. So subtle things that go a long way in a genre like this. You know, you have to do everything that adds up to make a great bass part that, again, complements the rest of the band. And in this style of music, you can't fight for independence. You have to kind of see how you can complement everything else. And as I always say, I think the bass has the most freedom in any band because there are so many different avenues you can take to complement a song. And this is a very great one. Just just being there to support the guitars, the sound, and I haven't even really mentioned his tone yet. It's an old school heavy bass tone. And I think bass tones have evolved a lot in heavy music, especially in the last 10 years with modeling and just the, the readily available technology to dual bi-amp and split signals and such. But this, this is an old school classic tone. It's got the warmth, but it's not shrill. It's got just a little bit of gristle on top, which just kind of pokes through somewhere in the guitar mix. So I don't hear bass tones like that in heavy music a lot. They're, they're very compressed and very, very driven now, which is a cool sound. It's kind of a newfangled thing, but it's kind of refreshing to hear a tone like this. All right, let's play this out. There's that little riff again. I hear the guitar doing that too. See, he's a little looser now, just palm muting, just just a tad. Oh 
opening up. That, 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 that little triplet thing's cool. Rad. This was truly a treat to watch. And I, I say that in some videos, but, you know, I'm, I'm circling back to a band I had more or less written off in the bass department for no other reason than it just, it, it's not a bass forward genre or band. And I could be wrong because there's a lot of their discography I have not heard. But this was really great to see that watching him play, he exercised so many small nuances that complement the feel of a song. Really small stuff, like just the subtle palm muting, mirroring what the guitar is doing, but then breaking away with kind of a, a groovy phrasing in the chorus, which just gives it a little bit of swagger. And Again, I want to go back and kind of hear the studio version to see if I can hear that stuff or if it's just a sum of the parts thing where it's working, it's doing its intended effect, but you're not really hearing it separated from everything else. And I imagine an organization like Slipknot is a, a with as many members and as dense as they are, you really have to know your role. And I I think supporting the overall sound and impact, the visceralness of their music is something that goes all the way down to Paul Gray and all the way up to Corey Taylor and everything in between. And this was just really great to see. I, I think I'm enamored with his beautiful picking technique, his old school heavy tone. That, that's just a very early 2000s kind of old school heavy bass tone. And I can appreciate that because bass has been able to cut through Better than ever with modern mixing, plugins, modeling. You know, there's kind of been a, a renaissance in bass tones. I feel like guitar tones were way ahead of their time before bass tones kind of caught up in heavy music. So there was something just really endearing about hearing that tone. It was just full range, had a little bit of grit on top, but it still had that clean low end that kind of gives their sound some pump. Those riffs kind of pump when he plays them. And Thank you guys for requesting this. I haven't had a ton of requests for this, but I've seen this video come through or refer to. You got to watch Paul Gray playing duality. So this was a something been on my list for many, many months now, and I'm happy to circle back to it. So thank you for your patience. Please come find me on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. Please like and subscribe this video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I love you all. Cheers. We'll see you next time.